Film Oil Company and your local mobile service station, marketers of Plume Motor Spirit and Mobile Oil, present Mobile Song. Mobile Song, the stories and songs of the makers of music. Tonight, Mobile Song brings you the voices of Glenda Raymond and Neil Warren Smith, and the story of that wonderful guy. When the famous opera singer Ezio Pinzer consented to appear in the Broadway production of South Pacific, he became overnight the most popular figure on the American stage, and captured the heart of every woman in New York. All this at the age of 57, and with a lifetime of operatic success behind him. What was the cause of this most remarkable happening? And why did his leading lady, Mary Martin, say that he made her dizzy at every performance? Why did producer Russell Krause describe him as a pinball machine with a million lights? Why did Lana Turner call him a dreamboat? We'll try to explain that in a moment. But first, Neil Warren Smith will sing the song from South Pacific that will always be associated with the name of H.C.O. Pinsar. Some enchanted evening You may see a stranger You may see a stranger Across a crowd If you want your car to run better and more economically, remember three things. Always use Plume Motor Spirit, the best buy by miles. The new wear-fighting mobile oil, the greatest oil ever made. 
And make sure your car gets regular mobile lubrication service at your local mobile service station. In fact, I strongly recommend you make your local mobile service station your motoring headquarters for everything you require. Plume, mobile oil, mobile lubrication, batteries, tyres and accessories. For the best products and the best in service, go to the mobile service station under the sign of the Flying Red Horse. The phenomenon of Ezio Pinzer has been the subject of much discussion in the United States. Newspaper articles and radio debates have tried to find reasons for the sudden and amazing popularity of this middle-aged singer. We could perhaps advance various reasons and put forward certain theories, but we think it may be more conclusive and certainly more entertaining if we tell the story of one particular incident in the life of Ezio Pinzer. An incident which, we hope, will explain the whole personality of this most remarkable man. Let us then set the scene of our story. The home of a New York physician, Dr. Leake. The time, 1940. The characters, Dr. Leake himself, a precise, intelligent, unemotional man in his late forties, and his daughter, Doris, an attractive girl of twenty. But, Father... This is the great opportunity of my life. Oh, rubbish. Oh, it isn't rubbish. If I turn this down, I'll be wasting the work of years. Now, Doris, let's look at this thing quite unemotionally. Let's go over the facts. There's only one fact, Father. I'm a dancer. A pretty good dancer, according to the people who should know. And now, after years of preparation, I've been offered the position of solo dancer at the Metropolitan Opera. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. I just can't afford to turn it down. My dear girl, to hear you talk, one would imagine you needed the money you could earn through this engagement. I can assure you that I am quite capable of providing for your future. It isn't a question of money. Father, I want to dance at the Metropolitan more than I've ever wanted to do anything in my life. What's your objection, anyway? I don't like the bohemian crowd you'd be likely to meet there. But I wouldn't have to make friends with any of them. I just do my work and keep to myself. Mm, if I really thought you could do that, Doris. I will, Father. I promise I will. Please see, I can do it. Will you promise me that you won't have anything to do with the other artists in the Metropolitan? Yes, of course. I'll have to speak to them sometimes, I suppose. But I'll never say any more than is absolutely necessary. And if anyone ever tries to get fresh, well, I'll just ignore him. Nice work, Miss Lee. You dance very well indeed. Oh, thank you very much. Will you want me any more this morning? Uh, yes, I think we'll try the ballet again later. There are one or two alterations I want to make. How about me, Joe? Can I go now? Not just yet, it's you. I want to do that scene of yours with the altered movements. Do you mind waiting? Oh, no, I don't mind. Why should I? I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> Take as long as you like, old man. Well, I'll make sure it won't be too long. We can't afford it at your salary. Oh, oh, oh listen to him. And all I get... Oh. Peanuts. You can look at Miss Leek for support. She works hard for a living. She's a dancer. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I saw you just now, my dear. You were charming. Thank you. Yeah, uh, now this, of course, is Mr. Ezio Pinzer, Miss Doris Leek. May I kiss your hand? I... I'll tell you when I'm ready, Ezio. Oh, take your time. I'm quite happy here. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> yes, he's a nice fellow. You like him, eh? Yes, very much. You are new at the Metropolitan, aren't you? Yes. Oh, yes. You like it here. We are one big happy family. And as the father of the family, I make you welcome. Thank you. Yes. I'm uh, 48, the oldest singer in the company. Oh, but you know what they say. A man is as young as he feels, right? I wouldn't know. Oh, come, come. You mustn't be like that with Ezio Pinza. We are going to be very good friends, I know. I like to be friendly with everyone. Indeed? 
Oh. oh, it's getting cold around here. I wonder where the draft is coming from. Ezio, you ready? Oh, yes, yes, coming. Now, don't go away. I'll be right back. I want to tell you the story of my life. Oh, dear. He's nice. But I wish he'd leave me alone. All right, Ezio. As soon as you're ready, I'd like you to rehearse your duet with Maria Cassini. I'm right, Joe. From the beginning, boys. Can it be? Dear, I believe it. Can it be? I'm his was a saying. Oh, what was I saying? I don't remember. You don't? Oh, that's bad. I always like my friends to remember what I say, but uh, never mind. Let us talk about something else. You, for instance. No. No, but why? I I'm afraid it wouldn't be very interesting. Oh, not to you, perhaps, but to me of the very greatest importance. You see, I think I'm going to fall in love with you. Oh. What's the matter? I, I won't listen to you. I won't listen. Oh, wait, come back, come back, please. Oh, Miss Leake, just a moment. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. Flowers for Miss Leake. Oh, how lovely. Who sent them? Uh, they're for Mr. Pinzer. Take them back, at once. <laughs> Doris, why won't you let me talk to you? I'm busy. Oh, but you're always busy. Yes, always. Goodbye. Listen, Doris. What is it? You are not afraid of me, are you? No, of course not. Then why do you run away from me all the time? I... I... 
All right, Doris, you may shut the door in my face, but one day you'll have to listen to me. This is your new dressing room, Miss Leek. Do you think you'll like it? Oh, yes. It's very nice. Thank you. I'll be quite comfortable here. Good morning, Doris. Oh. Surprised to see me? How did you get in here? <laughs> the door was open. I walked in. You see, I knew this was to be your new dressing room, so I thought I'd give you a welcome. Do you like the flowers? Thank you, Mr. Pinzer. They're lovely. But I think you'd better go now. Oh, give me just one minute. Why? I want to know why you dislike me. Oh, but I don't. I, I, I'd like you very much. But you run away from me all the time. You will not even let me talk to you. So this morning I made up my mind that this must stop. I decided that the time had come for an explanation. I'm sorry, I can't explain. But why? Because, well, you wouldn't understand. Oh, try me, my dear. I'm a very understanding kind of a man. Even my wife admitted that. Your wife? <laughs> oh, it's all right. I have no wife right now, but uh, I do have a daughter. Her name's Clelia. Yeah, she's about your age. Yeah, she's, I'm sure you two are going to get along very well together. No, it won't do, Mr. Pinzer. Oh, call me Ezio. And why will it not do? What could you possibly have against Clelia? Oh, nothing. Or against you, either. Personally. But you see, my father made me promise to have nothing whatever to do with any of the artists at the Metropolitan. But why in heaven's name? He said you were a lot of... Bohemian. <laughs> well, I've been called worse names than that in my time, but as it happens, I was born in Italy, not Bohemian. Oh, but, but, but my father... Well, I know what he meant, Doris, that we are a collection of rogues and vagabonds. You know, I should like to meet this father of yours. By the way, what does he do for a living? He's a doctor. Oh, excellent, excellent. I shall consult him about my throat. Is there something wrong with it? No, no. My throat has never given me the slightest trouble in all my 48 years, but... Uh, well, who knows? It could be possible, I suppose, that my vocal cords are wearing out. Let me see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's obvious that I need medical attention. <laughs> yes, so I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Will you come along with me, Doris, while I consult the excellent Dr. Leek? Oh, no. I wouldn't dare. Oh, but this is purely a professional matter. Oh, please help me. I, I really think, Mr. Pinzer... Ezio. I really think, Ezio, uh, that you better not see my father. But why? I'm sure he'd be very angry. Well, why should he be angry with a new patient? Oh, come, come, come. Uh, will you take me along to his office? Well, if I do, you just have to take the consequences. Oh, is he such an ogre, then? Oh, no. No, he's a darling, actually. Oh, very well, then. Take me to this, uh, this uh, darling. But uh, stay close to me, Doris. And if he tries to knock me down, be ready to catch me. Tall and handsome and a fine physical specimen, Ezio Pinzer, in a state of exaggerated panic, went along with Doris Leek to her father's surgery, allegedly to consult him about a throat which had never given the slightest trouble. But before we tell you about this most unusual interview, here's something else of importance. No doubt you, like most people, are very interested in any advice that will help you operate your car, truck or motorcycle at a lower cost and at the same time ensure longer life and higher resale value. Well, like any other mechanical unit, a car, truck or motorcycle needs the best attention and the best fuel and oil. So play safe. Go to your nearest white mobile service station under the sign of the Flying Red Horse. There you can obtain Plume Motor Spirit, recognized as the finest petrol you can obtain for maximum power and increased mileage. Yes, you'll get more miles to the gallon with Plume. At your mobile service station you can also obtain the new wear-fighting mobile oil, the finest oil ever made, and complete mobile lubrication service. We recommend that you make your local mobile service station your motoring headquarters for everything you require. Plume, mobile oil, mobile lubrication, tires, batteries and accessories. 
you'll find the mobile service station a good place to do business, and the proprietor a good man to do business with. His friendly, courteous and attentive service is yours for the asking at the mobile service station. Look for the sign of the flying red horse. <laughs> Eventually, H.C.O. Pincer was ushered into the presence of Dr. Leek, who was very surprised to see his daughter tagging along. Doris, what are you doing here? Father, I've come along to introduce Mr. H.C.O. Pinzer of the Metropolitan Opera. One of that terrible bohemian crowd, Dr. Leek. I uh, beg your pardon? Your daughter told me you disapproved of opera singers. Oh, no, no, it isn't that. Or do you perhaps prefer professional cyclists? I beg your pardon? I am a very good cyclist. I once came second in a six-day race. Well, I, uh, I used to ride a bicycle myself at one time. I challenge you to a race. <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't be any good these days. How old are you? Uh, 48. 48. So am I, but I'm as good as some of these youngsters even now. Oh, they don't know they're born. That's what I say, Mr... Uh... Uh, Pinzer, Father. Uh, that's what I say, Mr. Pinzer. The young men of today are not what they were in my time. No, no, no. They haven't the stamina. Nor the courage. No, nor the determination. Oh, really, H.C.? Well, no, he's right, Doris. I quite agree with him. Uh, I'd like to discuss this matter further, Mr. Pinzer. Oh, but I'm very busy at the moment. Oh, yes, Doctor. I'd like you to have a look at my throat sometime. Well, not today. It isn't urgent, but uh, we must have a good talk one of these days. I think we have much in common. Yes, yes, indeed. I'm glad Doris brought you along. Uh, how about coming to dinner tonight? Oh, delighted, my dear sir. Delighted. <laughs> When the baker discovered I was eating all the bread of myself, he threw me out of the door, giving me a helping hand, or uh, perhaps I should say a helping foot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Doris? A helping foot. <laughs> <laughs> and then my father said to me, Fortunato, I was christened Fortunato, but uh, everyone else called me Ezio. I like Ezio better, don't you, Father? Uh, don't interrupt him, Doris. Uh, go on, Ezio. Uh, tell us what your father said. Uh, my father said, uh, Fortunato, I am a lumber dealer, but your head is far thicker than any of the wood I sell. You are far too stupid to be in the lumber business. You had better try something, something simple, something that requires no intelligence. Why not study medicine? Eh? Oh. Oh, 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 that's good, Ezio. <laughs> Study medicine. Something that requires no intelligence. <laughs> oh, that's really wonderful. <laughs> but I couldn't do any better than one second in a six-a-day bicycle race. And my colleagues all used to poke fun at me. Oh, but I didn't care. I'd just get under the shower and sing for all I was worth. La 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 uh, Ezio, Ezio, did you say you wanted me to have a look at your throat? What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing, Doctor, nothing at all, but uh, I thought you might find it uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a scamp, Ezio, a real scamp. But I like you all the better for it, I really do. I'm glad of that, but I'd rather hear Doris tell me that she liked me. Uh, Doris? Why... Ezio. Why do you think I've been chasing after you all this time? Why do you think I've gone to all this trouble to make your father's acquaintance? I thought... I, I didn't know... Oh, sure, sure. The doctor's a nice guy. I couldn't wish for a better host, but... You are the one I'm really interested in, Doris. You see, the first time I saw you, I made up my mind that we were going to marry one day. Oh, no. You, you don't mean that, Ezio. But I do. I mean every word of it. But you're... But, but I'm... Sure, sure, I know. I'm old enough to be your father, and I've been married before, and I've got a grown-up daughter, but... I love you with every drop of blood in my heart. And I'll never be happy until I hear you say... You're going to be my wife. And nobody's going to stop me from marrying you. Nobody in the world. So what do you say, Doris? Is it all right? Is it? I... Is it all right? Tell me, please, tell me. Father! No, no, don't look at your father. Look at me. I... 
Oh, Father. Well, go on, my girl. Say yes. Say it quickly before he changes his mind. If I've got to have a son-in-law, this is the one I want. Ezio Pinza. <laughs> And believe it or not, Ezio and Doris then and there became engaged. Papa gave his emphatic blessing, although he'd never met his prospective son-in-law before that day. And three months later, the happy pair were married. Two children were born of the marriage. But the career of Ezio Pinza was far from over. South Pacific lay ahead. And such numbers as this. service. Take your car to the local white mobile service station under the sign of the Flying Red Horse. There you'll get Plume Motor Spirit, the finest petrol in Australia. Wear fighting mobile oil, the greatest oil ever made. Complete mobile lubrication service plus mobile efficiency and courtesy. It will pay you well to make your local mobile service station your local headquarters for everything you require. Always look for the sign of the flying red horse. Mobile Song was written by John Ormiston Reed. The narrator was Roland Strong. The producer was Dorothy Crawford. The program featured Glenda Raymond and Neil Warren Smith. The Mobile Theatre Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. Mobile Song. Presented for your enjoyment by the Vacuum Oil Company and your local mobile service station. Remember, for better motoring, always buy from the plume pump. <laughs>